Welcome to the new video of our video series ROS to Basics. In this video, we will talk about ROS workspace and packages and how can you use it for your own ROS projects. So let's get started. Now, before we start with understanding or before we start already messing around with terminal, it is very important that I give you some illustration uh, regarding how the concept works and then we can move on. So, ROS workspace. What is ROS workspace? It's a workspace where all your files related to your particular project is stored. Everything, everything. Nothing is outside your ROS workspace. Everything that your ROS workspace needs will be inside that one, right? So let us first, what we do is we create an illustration or we create a box, a box which is a ROS workspace. Now I can give it any name, any name such as I would give it right now, uh, test underscore workspace. Now I have just given this a workspace a name called as test underscore workspace. Now underscore workspace is not important. Even if you don't do it, it doesn't mean that it is not a workspace. But uh, usually it has been used throughout that underscore workspace so that you can distinguish between different files, right? So now if it's underscore WS, we know it's a workspace. Now inside this one, uh, you can have multiple projects or multiple packages, sorry. If I may put it, uh, you, you can have multiple packages in it. So for example, you have uh, package one and you have package two and then you have one more package in this workspace, right? Now, let me give it a name package one, package two. But in this case, the third package is not really a package. It's a, it's a group of various packages. So package or I would say uh, package three is not a package, but it's a group package. So what it means is that it has uh, multiple packages. So now this package three or group package three has multiple packages. So I can give it any name, whatever I want to, but I will give it like package 3.1, package 3.2, package 3.3, package 3.4. So basically it belongs to one group, big group package three, and then you have this multiple packages which are inside. Now the naming convention, again, as I said, doesn't have to be this way. It can be any name, whatever you think, it's just to make an illustration over here. Now you can see here that uh, this is my package one, this is my package two, and then you have multiple packages inside it, inside this package, group package three. Now how can you determine if a particular folder in your workspace is a package or is a group package? So when you want to know if a particular folder in your workspace is a package, then you will find two files in it. So one file will be the CMake list, you have a CMake list, and other is going to be a package.xml. And if you see these two files, then you know that that is a package. And when you don't see this file, then you either it's a it's a group package, right? So either it's a group package or it's not it's a it's not a package at all. So if it's a group package, then you will have multiple folders in it. And then if you go in that, so if I go specifically in the 3.1, then I will find this as well in 3.1. So when you have these two files inside a particular folder, that means it is a package. So just grave that in your mind. It is very easy it, because sometimes whenever you clone different projects and when you don't have control over what they did so far, and it's very difficult to understand what packages are we working with. So you just find this two one and then you know that it's a package and then you can you know orient your work according to that one. But what does CMake list or package really means? Now, this is a very important question. Now, what are these files exactly? CMake list.txt and package.xml. So 
a package XML contains all the metadata about your about your project about, or about your package. We will get to it. We will obviously when we create a package, then we will understand what are the what are this meta information that we are talking about. And the second is the CMake list or text. It just describes how your code uh, needs to be built. Like uh, for example, how to build a code within that particular package. So, I mean, there are a couple of dependencies that you have. There are a couple of things that you want to use in your package. And this files or this package.xml or cmakelist.xml just helps you to build that particular package or it also has all the information that how you want to run your particular package. So initially you don't want to mess that mess with it, but in future or in the next videos, we will obviously play with it. We will try to edit those things because we want to make some changes. So the properties of the packages could be changed with those two files, which we will definitely see in the upcoming videos. But for now, it's it just to understand that if these two files are in one folder, that folder is a package. Okay, so now we understood how the packages are oriented and configured in your workspace. But what does really package mean for your project? Let's take an example. We are looking at a a rover, a rover mission. So rover mission has a robotic arm, then it has a base which navigates and it has a different sort of sensors, right? So let's take an example. This P1 is a, is a, is a package for uh, some camera sensor. This is a camera sensor, right? And then this is what it is, is a robotic arm. And then what you have here are is the is the navigation stuff. So all this group belongs to a navigation. So we can also call it as a navigation stack, right? So basically the navigation stack will have different packages inside. For example, one that controls the motor uh, of the of the navigation. Other one takes the values from the GPS. Other which generates the 3D map or whatever. And you have couple of them. So it depends on how you want to. Uh, arrange your project right so these different packages they perform different tasks and when they perform different tasks they can also communicate with each other and that's the beauty of ROS so basically these packages they can communicate with each other like uh, each of the individual packages can uh, communicate with p1 each of the individual packages can communicate with p2 and also this way as well and so on and so forth so Arranging these packages is important because whatever packages you need uh, could be uh, a part of your workspace. So let's take an example like you are developing a big project, but not all the packages you will develop from scratch. Some of the packages people have already worked on, for example, some th this package, camera sensor package or the robotic arm package. Some people have already worked on it or maybe the, there are some packages which the company already gives you when they give you the hardware. So this packages you can already install, pre-install it and then you can start using it in your own project. So that's the beauty and that's the modularity that ROS gives you. And um, this is what we are going to understand in this whole a playlist of ROS basics of how they are communicating and how they are oriented. But this was just a short introduction or illustration uh, that how the packages are configured, how they are used, what they are and then how they are uh, placed in a workspace. Now we will move on to the exciting stuff which is just getting started with the terminal. So let's get.